continue. So I have to uh, I had to join my I I to join through my uh, mobile. So uh, sorry for the delay from my side too. Anyway, uh, so before I uh, start my actual lecture, uh, usually I uh, used to mention uh, where do I come from <clears throat> because you know. Uh, probably you guys should know what Chikri is all about. And a very uh, uh, light aside, I went for that bit in a place like you know, Karate. Probably you guys know this is a very small town. And the barber asked me, sir, you know, in a very typical Tamil slang, where do you work? I said I work in a place called the city. So, what is uh, the immediate response from the barber? He asked me a question. On a very spontaneous note, that did I make an attempt? I was I was very surprised to hear uh, you know such a uh, uh, question from a barber. So what I decided from that moment on was wherever I go and uh, whatever the talk I give, the first slide uh, would be where I come from. Okay. Uh, in fact, I uh, come from a uh, institute from an institute called uh, CT, which is Central Electrochemical Research Institute. It is one of the constant laboratory of CSIR. We do have three different subunits. The headquarters is located at Karakudi. We do have subunits uh, like in Chennai, Tutukuri, and Mandapur. We are roughly about 100 employees, out of which one third are scientists. Uh, even now in India, this is the one and only research institute devoted completely to the field of electrochemical science and technology. Okay, I repeat the sentence again. Right? Sikri is the one and only research institute in India committed to the electrochemical science and technology. In fact, we do work from looking at fundamental aspects of electron transfer reaction across the interface, electrode electrolyte interface, to making a design for target applications. And we do fabricate you know, uh, prototype instruments, to device for many functional applications. Right. Apart from this, we do have uh, good uh, analytical facilities. One can carry out uh, any kind of uh, electrochemical science and technology research with that facility. Sir Ganesh, sir. Sir Ganesh, sir. Please, please sir. Yeah. Yes, sir. Your voice is little breaking. Is it possible to make it little clear? Uh, okay. Uh, it's breaking. Yeah. It's a network. I think the network is a little less. I think that. That is the problem. Uh, sorry, sir. Echo, echo is echo is no problem. I think the network uh, network is not so good. I think. Oh, is it okay? Uh, I'm I'm getting it from BSNL. Uh, maybe I'll try. Uh, then we will see where it. But your institute uh, internet is not it okay or? Uh, it, it does not it restore the still off only. Okay, 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 okay. okay. Uh, okay. Am I am I clear now? Audible or uh, yes, little breaking. So voice is little breaking. So oh, the, the sentences is not so clear to audible. That is it. Oh, is it okay? Oh, um, yeah. Uh, so uh, let me let me see. If I just try to you know um, bring in an angle where I can get more. Yeah, yeah, yes, sir, yes, sir, yes, sir. Yeah. Um, Okay. How well said? Is it is it clear? Yeah, now it is a better, sir. A little better. A little better. Okay. Uh, let me continue. If uh, the internet there is too, uh, in our institute, I will switch over. Okay. So, uh, okay. Uh, so apart from this, we do have uh, a unique course uh, which is B.Tech in Chemical and Electrical Engineering. Uh, of course, uh, uh, students are completing 12, so they can take up this beta course. And most of them are after completing for MSPG in abroad. Right. Uh, if you look at the history behind SICRI, the foundation stone was laid in the year 1948 by then Prime Minister Sri Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru. And it was declared open in the year 1953 uh, by then President Narva Pandit Radhakrishnan. Okay. And of course, you can look at the photo that apart from uh, uh, Dr. Krishnan, we do have a man which is uh, uh, who is standing uh, right next to him is uh, Dr. Bhattacharya, the founder of CSIR, 
and the in between the two that uh, that was person who is speaking uh, who is speaking in the photo right and he is uh, dr aram malakuthetty the very known philanthropist who belongs to this part of the world you know uh, because of his city exists now he has donated 100 acres of land and 15 lakhs of rupees to establish an institute like sigri as you can see we are now roughly about 7 decades old and uh, we do work completely in the area of electrochemical science and technology now uh, interestingly during the inaugural function this person was there i hope you all know who uh, this person is he was the laureate dr sarsiviraman sarsiviraman right and during the inaugural function he posed to such a question what if this laboratory is going to do unless otherwise the workers in this laboratory feel that it is up to them to do their very best otherwise these laboratories will remain uh, as a giant question mark in the sky of course he was a physicist he was looking at the sky so during the inaugural uh, uh, inaugural function on 14th january 1953 uh, sarsidi ram posed this such a question so you can imagine Uh, you know, it's like uh, you need somebody uh, to uh, inaugural uh, to inaugurate a department in your university, let's say, and suddenly that person asks you such a question like, uh, "Why do you want to start such department when there are let's say thousands of departments that exist as India? You know, how do you guys feel about it?" Now, the same feeling Sikriens had probably uh, during 1950, but I'm sure now Raman would have been alive today. He would have been more than happy to see what Sikri has contributed overall to the growth of, uh, you know, electrical science and technology in general, and particularly to the growth of India. I can list down, uh, I, I can list down many achievements from Sikri, starting from providing corrosion prevention coating to bomb and bridge, and uh, developing ion-selective electrodes for specific like the AC reduction, chloride ion reduction. then apart from this we also developed the what is called the electrode like, time sir electrode so many such developments happened over the period of time to the late tradition being uh, make india project of uh, fabricating lithium ion cells at chennai so we have a center which is established very recently uh, to fabricate 100 cells per day that's the target we have now okay so am i am i audible or still my voice is breaking is it okay am i audible no response is it is it okay am i audible or still my voice is being said still it is breaking still it is breaking oh okay uh, i mean i i uh, i i have joined from uh, bnl mobile suddenly our uh, youtube internet went off so let's say i am Suggest here and then so that you get a signal. Okay. Now, uh, celebrate Science Day in order to commemorate the discovery of Raman. I'm sure you guys should know, you know, uh, the history behind the uh, Raman discovery. So say till now, Raman was the one and only scientist who got Nobel Prize for the work he has done completely in India. okay i rephrase my sentence again uh, even now ram the one and only scientist who got the nobel prize for the work he has done completely in india okay uh, in fact he got nobel prize in the field of physics in 1930 for the discovery of raman right and in order to commemorate that discovery we will celebrate in every year on february 28 okay so if you look at the history behind the uh, uh in a, this novel right i hope you guys know what uh, no prize is all about right uh this is the week nobel prize will be announced uh, nobel uh, winners nobel uh, award winners will be announced during this week second week of october and december second saturday this may 10th or 11 every year the nobel prize Award ceremony will happen in a place called the Stockholm in Sweden. Accept the Nobel Prize for Peace. 
the award ceremony will happen at a place called Oslo in Norway. Now, why do I talk about Nobel Prize? Because uh, though we had uh, many Nobel laureates uh, from India, but Raman was the one and only one who, uh, you know, in the field of science at least, who has worked completely in India. Okay. No. Uh, so this is the uh, quartz spectrograph Raman used to demonstrate uh, the discovery of Raman effect, Raman signal, uh, through a famous lecture in Bangalore on March 16, 1928. Now, these are uh, Nobel Prizes from India. In fact, the Nobel Prize uh, prizes are usually awarded to six different fields, starting from chemistry, physics, physiology, or medicine, uh, economics, uh, peace, and literature. Okay? So, we do have many uh, Nobel laureates from India, starting from Ravindranath Thakur to Sarsi Viraman Haran Kurana to to, uh, recent addition being with Banerjee in the field of economics in the year 2019. As you can see, as far as science is concerned, we do have many NRIs who got Nobel Prize, but among them, uh, Raman was the only one who has worked in India, in, in a place called Indian Association of Cultivation of Science in Canada. Now, that's about uh, Nobel Prize because you know, I want you guys to uh, know about uh, what this Nobel Prize is all about so that you can translate this into the field of science and technology. Okay. So, as far as I am concerned, uh, basically I am a chemist. Uh, I do work in the chemistry and I do take concepts from material science and biology to come up with sensors and uh, sensors, catalysts, and I do work on a small prototype device fabrication mainly in the area of energy and environmental science and for uh, biomedical applications. So, as far as this talk is concerned, <clears throat> I will uh, try to highlight a, a fundamental concepts behind the electrochemistry as a whole. I will try to explain you why electrochemistry is important in the context of energy, in conversion and storage devices. And I will try to highlight some of the basic principles and theory behind the uh, uh, electrochemical techniques that one can use for uh, solving global issues. Okay. Now, uh, if someone asks you what is electrochemistry, so your answer would be yes, it's a, a branch of chemistry in particular. It deals with study of electron transfer reactions at interface. Okay. So, what do I mean by that? Let's say why why one has to worry about uh, electron transfer reaction. You know. Uh, I ask a series of questions. You guys don't have to answer. Just think about it. Let's say uh, we all have good food in the night. <clears throat> okay. And after good dinner, we go to uh, bed to sleep. Right? And uh, who asked you to wake up in the morning? Probably uh, you would have kept an alarm or disturbance from our you know, uh, spouse or uh, kids, friends, mobile phones, etc. Let's say we do get up in the morning, and after a couple of hours or so, you feel very hungry, right? So why do you feel hungry? You know, let's say you take some uh, good breakfast. After uh, the breakfast, uh, uh, we go to a bus stop to catch a bus to come to university or institute. You know, when you get into bus, when you look at someone, you feel very happy, and when you look at someone else, you feel very much irritated, right? So rather, I would like to say that we express our emotions. Okay. So why all these things happen? That's the question, right? And you guys would generally say that all these things happen because of uh, biochemical reactions which occur in our body. Okay. And I would go one step ahead and say that all these things happen because of electron transfer reactions which occur in our body. Do you get me? All these things happen because of electrochemical reactions which occur in our body. The moment you talk of any biochemical reaction, there could be some molecules which can undergo oxidation and some other would undergo reduction to bring about all these changes what we discussed a while ago. Right? So, that's why understanding electron transfer reaction becomes very critical. Uh, you can even correlate with the human behavior aspect as a whole. Okay. Not just that, 
so any study which deals with uh, such kind of electron transfer reactions at interface it could be solid liquid interface it could be solid gas or liquid gas interface okay so that kind of study is nothing but your electrochemistry <clears throat> now in general electrochemistry deals with two different kinds of reaction okay two different kinds of reaction what are those two categories the first one in which you can apply the voltage to drive a chemical reaction and the second one the voltage is generated because of inbuilt chemical reaction okay right now we assume that uh, the voltage term i will try explain where does it origin from okay a bit later <clears throat> these are the two different categories what electrochemistry deals with let's let's take an example what do i mean by voltage is generated because of chemical reaction okay let's say we all uh, have wall clock in our house okay the moment the wall clock stops what do we do we simply change the battery right and the moment you connect a battery the clock starts working why does it work because it provides an voltage because of the inbuilt redox reaction inbuilt chemical reaction associated with the battery so that's the kind of reaction what electrochemistry deals with okay the the other kind of category is voltage is applied to drive a chemical reaction what do i mean by that let's say uh, probably you guys should have read the uh, recent uh, newspaper saying that uh, uh, water could be used as a fuel to drive vehicle can we really use water as a fuel to drive vehicle okay how about the thermodynamics of that reaction i will i will talk about water splitting probably tomorrow uh, in a very broad way right now you are saying that yes we can uh, use what as a fuel to drive vehicle provided you split water into hydrogen oxygen how do you split you can apply an voltage about 1.23 volt versus normal hydrogen electrode if you apply water could be split into hydrogen and oxygen so that both could be used as a fuel so that's the kind of category that comes under the first category of electrochemistry where you one can apply a voltage and drive a chemical reaction so such kind of uh, redox reaction one can study and the study which deals with such kind of processes is nothing but electrochemistry i deliberately put a couple of images from google you know the moment you uh, if electrochemistry you would get uh, such kind of images right you guys know even you take a, a fruit like lemon or orange you can prick the fruit with two conducting rods and that would establish an electrochemical cell at the interface and that will get uh, an voltage right now so in general uh, electrochemistry could be used to tune delta g what do i mean by delta g right delta g is nothing but your gibbs free energy as you can see the equation delta g is equal to minus mp in in this equation m is number of electrons associated with the process f is faraday's constant and e is nothing but your potential <clears throat> now uh, for a given process the parameters both n and f are constant the only variable parameter is e that is potential so what does it tell you by changing the potential you can basically play with the delta g you can tune from a non spontaneous to spontaneous and the vice versa reaction you know that's where uh, first category where voltage is applied to drive a chemical reaction you know thermodynamically water splitting reaction is not allowed because you do have a large activation energy barrier but by applying a potential of about 1.23 volt versus normal hydrogen electrode you can split water so that's where applying potential used to tune delta g okay so Uh, if we look at electrochemistry as a whole, compared to the chemical concept, where if you want to uh, probably uh, these two graphs you would have you would have read during your uh, probably schools or uh, undergrads, right? For example, a reaction to undergo 
the reactant has a cross an energy barrier which is uh, which is an activation energy barrier ea and the moment it cross it can undergo a chemical reaction to give you the product now you can reduce the activation energy in a normal chemical reaction by let's say using a catalyst or by applying a temperature or by applying pressure etc correct so that you can reduce the activation energy barrier and uh, the chemical reaction can undergo to give you a product now in case of electrochemistry apart from these parameters you also have current and potential to tune such activation energy barrier okay so that's the uh, added advantage we do have in electrochemistry now <clears throat> i i keep on mentioning a couple of terms in electrochemistry like current and potential now where do uh, the potential originates from okay let's let's look at uh, the very fundamental concepts of where does the potential originate from the moment you dip any conducting rod into an electrolyte let's say you you dip a copper rod into a sodium chloride solution so this scenario establishes an electrode electrolyte interface right a solid liquid interface where the dip the copper electrode will act as an electrode and sodium chloride solution let's assume it uh, will, will act as an electrolyte the electrode will act as an electronic conductor okay and the electrolyte will act as an ionic conductor the moment you dip an electrode into an electrolyte at solid liquid interface it establishes a double layer structure right it is it establishes a double layer structure what do i mean by double layer there is a separation of layer of charges across the interface let's say uh, let's assume the metal as a positive charge and the corresponding negative charge would come from the electrolyte part so this separation of layer of charges across the interface establishes a double layer structure in turn this gives you a parameter called capacitance right c <clears throat> what's the relationship between capacitance and potential it is correlated through charge stored at the interface so c is equal to q by e do you get me the capacitance c is equal to q by e where q is the charge stored at the interface in fact that's the origin of uh, potential in electrochemistry the potential arises because of the spontaneous formation of double layer at the interface now i will i will describe a little bit about double layer structure a while ago right now let's assume that uh, is it possible to determine potential of a single interface the answer to the question is no we cannot uh, measure potential of a single interface rather what we can measure is the potential difference between two different interfaces okay so how do we how do we understand this concept i, I used to tell a story Uh, uh during my classes here at uh, you know for phd student for example let's say uh, someone is a good uh, uh, cricket player okay let's assume he is a very good batsman how does uh, one can say that he is a very good batsman by comparing with a very good batsman like sachin tendulkar or virat kohli or uh, uh, dhoni etc correct so similarly in order to measure uh, the potential of a single interface we use another interface remember you can term uh, you can use uh, 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 people like sachin dhoni or kohli as a parent provided they perform consistently right a couple of matches they scored 100 and another couple of matches if they don't they go continuously then we cannot use them as a reference do you get me you can add them as a reference for comparison so clearly in order to measure potential of a single interface we have to use an another electrode okay so the moment you dip another electrode into an electrolyte that establishes uh, another double layer in turn it establishes another potential the moment you uh, take a lead from these two uh, electrodes and connect to a voltmeter that display a voltage value so that means you measure the potential difference across the interfaces in order to measure precise value 
we keep one electrode as a reference electrode that's where uh, we use uh, electrodes like normal hydrogen electrode saturated calomel electrode silver silver electrode mercury mercurous oxide or mercury mercurous sulfate electrode etc all these things could be used as a reference electrode okay remember uh, the potential of a uh, normal hydrogen electrode is assumed to be zero volt okay so even uh, if you want to describe a half cell of a, a standard hydrogen electrode which is nothing but a platinum electrode dipped in one molar hcl that interface would also display a potential value but for our convenience we uh, we assume uh, the potential of normal hydrogen electrode as zero volt so based on that we arrange emf series right we arrange electromotive force series uh, in which whichever the element that undergo oxidation we keep a positive potential we keep above the hydrogen electrode and whatever the element that undergo reduction we designate them as a negative potential and we we keep those elements below the potential of hydrogen electrode and that's how uh, that's how we frame uh, the emf series right now uh so when you look at the double layer structure there are different uh, models have been proposed for this double layer structure okay there are models like helmholtz perrin model goy chapman model and stern model are usually uh, available in the books which describes the double layer structure but apart from that there is a fourth model of electrical double layer which was proposed by bakris and devanagan okay why i mentioned that fourth model is because uh, the person devanagan was working at sikri uh, during 1960s when they proposed the fourth model of electrical double layer in fact bokris was also working here at sikri okay <clears throat> now uh, what do they do they basically uh, corrected the capacitance measurement value by including the dielectric constant of the solvent and the dipole moment of the solvent uh, which which essentially arises from the electrolyte component okay so that's how uh, the potential is originated in electrochemistry now uh, normally we do use three different electrodes in electrochemistry one is working electrode or test electrode that's where you monitor the electron transfer reaction the other one is a reference electrode so you measure the potential difference uh the actual potential value of working electrode with respect to reference so that, that's where the potential exists between reference and working and the resultant current will flow between working and counter electrode okay the resultant current will flow between working and counter electrode now uh normally uh we do use at least 100 times higher surface area or 100 times higher geometric area of the counter electrode compared to working electrode that is because to minimize the current value due to counter reaction okay that's the uh, kind of basic concept one should understand now if you look at in general any electron transfer reaction the following are the steps that will happen uh, at the electrode electrolyte interface let's say uh, you have a redox probe you have a molecule that can undergo electron transfer reaction dissolved in the electrolyte and you keep the electrode as a working electrode and you monitor the reaction the following are the uh, steps through which an electron transfer reaction will occur the redox probe molecule will diffuse from the bulk to the interface get adsorbed on the electrode surface undergoes electron transfer reaction to give you a product okay it can either lose an electron to the electrode and undergo oxidation or it can accept an electron from the electrode and undergo a reduction so it undergoes an electron transfer reaction to give you a product the product discharge and diffuses back to the bulk of the solution okay so among these processes whichever process is slower is called a rate determining step do you get me among these processes of uh, you know <clears throat> diffusion from the bulk adsorption electron transfer reaction product formation and and the product has to dissolve and diffuse back to the bulk of the solution so among these processes 
whichever process is slower is called a rate determining step and usually diffusion of ions from the bulk to the interface is slower that's why you do observe peak formation in cyclic voltammeter okay i will i will describe this uh, a bit later now uh, i deliberately put this slide to understand that you know uh, whatever the electrochemical equipment we use i do know that uh, uh, the suppliers would give you at a very very high pair price okay but it is it is uh, easy to fabricate on such kind of potential stat uh, from by ourselves itself okay so probably you would have heard that uh, i am a chemist basically when i went for a phd at rri bangalore uh, my guide asked me to fabricate a potential stat on a breadboard which is the image i shown on the right side of the slide okay <clears throat> so i i was wondering you know why my guide asked me to uh, do a physics experiment Uh, though i am from a chemistry background okay uh, but uh, my guide was you know a very good human being he was uh, smiling and say that ganesh simply you do whatever i say you will understand this at the end of your phd so now i realize why uh, he asked me to fabricate a potential stat because unless otherwise you do fabricate and understand how the equipment works it would be very difficult to understand if you face any problem okay so in electrochemistry uh, what do we do mostly uh, we do fabricate uh, i mean we do apply a potential and monitor the current due to electron transfer reaction okay so what we need uh, in terms of uh, electronics is two op amps meaning two operational amplifiers based circuits we can use two ic's integrated circuits one is a voltage follower that is because the working electrode has to feel whatever the potential you apply so that is a voltage follower and the other one is current voltage converter the moment uh, uh, you did the working electrode into an electrolyte uh, let's assume if there is an electron transfer reaction which will provide a change in voltage across the interface and you pass that voltage through a resistor you get a current as an output okay so that's why we need current voltage converter so on a whole by using uh, these two uh, operational amplifier based circuits one is an voltage follower and the other one is a current voltage converter okay so by playing with uh, uh, these two ic's one can uh, fabricate a potential stat or galvanostat that could be used for understanding uh, electrochemical reaction <clears throat> i am i'm sorry this slide is slightly blur but uh, i can i can able to explain the concept okay now uh, by applying a potential to the working electrode okay i i did not talk about where this the current comes from yet uh, the current essentially originates in electrochemistry because of lee chatelier principle what do i mean by that how do we understand let's say uh, now that we moved from you know classical blackboard based teaching or you know uh, conference and a physical present uh, way of presenting to a virtual mode of uh, lecture let's say if uh, uh, if someone is listening to me in the talk okay and while walking across the corridor suddenly i hit that uh, hit that person okay assume that he doesn't know i i come here i come there to deliver a lecture what would be immediate reaction from that person immediate reaction would be Uh, that person would be uh, would hit me back correct the moment i hit that person that person would hit me back that's the kind of response you would get okay <clears throat> so uh, this could be correlated directly with the electrode electrolyte interface that's what lee chatelier principle talks about if a system is at equilibrium okay if the system is at equilibrium if you apply a stress the equilibrium will shift in such a way that it will nullify the stress now how do how do i describe an equilibrium probably you guys should have read about it the rate of forward is exactly equal to rate of reverse reaction and there is no mass change between forward and reverse delta m is zero and in case of electrochemistry delta i is also zero there is no current change between forward and reverse reaction unless otherwise a system satisfies all these three conditions 
you cannot term the system is at equilibrium now why do i have to worry about equilibrium uh, it's a very you know tricky question like why do i have to worry about equilibrium is because equilibrium is a state where the electrode electrolyte interface exhibits its real characteristic what do i mean by that let's say i i tell you a small story so that you can understand this uh, much better I'm I'm still audible, right? Or my voice is still breaking? Is much better now? Are you guys are listening to me? Yeah, it is better now. Are it's okay, no problem. Okay, sir. Okay, yeah. I just want to uh, cross check now and then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, it's, fine, sir. it's fine, sir. Please, sir. Yeah, yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so, why do I have to worry about equilibrium? Is because let's assume uh, someone has got a gold medal during their master's degree. Let's assume. okay that person goes to the stage and receives the medal comes to the other end of the stage okay so after receiving the medal uh, suddenly some of his or her friends go to that person and uh, talk to them okay how many of you guys think that that person would exhibit his or her real characteristic you know it would be very difficult to assess because at that moment the moment that person receives an award or a uh, in a gold medal that person should be at excited state and at that moment that person will think that he or she is the one and only person in the world who knows the subject very well you know that that may not be true but it is okay that person will be at the excited state so at the excited state he or she will not exhibit her or his real characteristics on the other hand on a regular day when uh, he or she comes to the class you know uh, that student may be obedient uh, he or she may be very friendly helping to uh, their friends you know so they exhibit their real characteristic during equilibrium state that's why it is very uh, important to understand the system at equilibrium the same concept could be extrapolated to electrode electrolyte interface too okay at the equilibrium system exhibits its real character no that's why sorry that's why in electrochemistry we do have techniques that can understand the system that understand the at equilibrium like uh, potentiometry and get to equilibrium and you can use other kind of technique and the other is far away from equilibrium like voltmetry and uh, pulse technique etc mm -hmm. now so coming back to lead theory principle uh, uh, when you apply a stress to the system of equilibrium the equilibrium will shift in such way that it will nullify it will nullify the stress in fact the origin of potential is a kind of disturbance the scientific term for disturbance is called perturbation the origin of potential is a kind of perturbation to the system at equilibrium and in order to get rid of that perturbation the system responds and that response is nothing but your current okay so now when i say you apply a potential and carry out electron transfer reaction what exactly happens what is the fundamental concepts behind uh, electron transfer reaction at interface could be explained through this image okay now uh, let's say uh, normally we use metal as a semiconductor as an electrode so that has a uh, well defined band energy the moment you apply a potential let's say uh, 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 by convention positive potential uh, i mean the positive sign is assumed for both potential and current for oxidation process and the negative sign uh, of our potential and current is designated for uh, reduction process do you get me so let's say when we apply a potential what do we do is we shift to the energy level on the electrode surface so that suppose let's say you apply a positive potential uh, so what do we do is we bring down the energy level on the electrode surface so that the species the species a in the electrolyte loses an electron undergoes oxidation to give you the product so that's how the oxidation occurs so that the species a can donate an electron to 
the electrolysis because the electrode C level is brought down. Highest occupied uh, molecular orbital of the species from the electrode. So species can donate an electron. So that's how the oxidation happens. Similarly, when you apply your potential to the electrode, you can adjust the energy level and the electrode uh, uh, in such a way that you bring above the homo of uh, the species so that the, uh, I mean, sorry, lumo, lowest unoccupied of the species. So the electrode can donate an electron to the species or in turn, the species can accept an electron undergoes reduction to give you the product. So that's how, uh, in principle, oxidation and reduction occurs uh, by potential in, uh, in case of electrolytes. <clears throat> now, uh, I will also try to highlight why uh, electrochemistry is such a powerful technique. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, the moment you give any conducting electrode into an electrode, right? I mentioned that there is a spontaneous formation of uh, double layer at the interface. That leads to a parameter called a capacitance, and in turn, uh, the potential is originated because of the double layer structure. <clears throat> now, uh, in case of double layer, the very next layer to the electrode is called inner helmut plane, and uh, there would be a, a negative charges arises from the electrolyte, and uh, the next to inner helmut plane is called outer helmut plane, okay, and beyond which the molecules are in random diffusion, that is called the diffusion layer. Now, why electrochemistry is powerful because the typical thickness of the electrode electrolyte interface is of the order of nanometer. Okay, is of the order of nanometer. Even if you apply 100 millivolt, okay, even if you apply 100 millivolt to that interface, the electric field felt at that interface is very, very high. You can calculate the electric field by uh, using the following formula, right? Uh, uh, the voltage applied divided by distance of separation. Let's say 100 millivolt within the nanometer level, 100 millivolt divided by 1 nanometer, uh, you would get uh, 100 into 10 power 6 volt per meter. Do you get me? It would be 100 into 10 power 6 volt per meter, which is humongous. Though you apply a very, very small voltage of 100 millivolt, the electrode electrolyte interface will feel as if it is 100 into 10, 10 power 6 volt per meter. That's why uh, many chemical reactions which are not possible through normal uh, chemical method, one can uh, carry out such reaction using electrochemistry just because uh, the yeah. electric field felt at the mm -hmm. this is very, very high. I keep up in okay. Okay, so that's the uh, advantage of uh, electrochemistry one can talk about. Now, uh, you guys know that uh, uh, the electrochemistry in fact started with uh, 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 this person, Faraday's, uh, who is the man in the uh, discovery of electrolysis, electrodeposition, you know, electroplating, etc. to propose one of the one to the Sorry? Uh, so you do know that... Uh -huh. uh, Faraday's law of electrolysis, which, which starts from the first law, which talks about the amount of substance deposited is directly proportional to the quantity of electricity passed, right? And similarly, the second law talks about if you deposit two different metals, uh, the amount of depo deposited metal is proportional to their corresponding equal and white. Okay. <clears throat> now, so... Uh, uh, recall the many different processes which I uh, talked about during the course of uh, electron transfer reaction, diffusion of molecule from the bulk to the interface, uh, adsorption of species, electron transfer reaction to give you a product formation, and the desorption and diffusion of product back to the bulk of the solution. Now, uh, the current in electrochemistry arises because of three different modes of mass transfer. Okay, they are migration, diffusion, and the convection. Among all these processes, diffusion is the predominant mode of mass transfer. And keep it in mind, all the equations in electrochemistry are derived 
based on the assumption that diffusion is the predominant mode of mass transfer so we need to eliminate current contribution from migration and the convection how do we eliminate it before that we can look at what are the uh, definitions of these three different modes of mass transfer in fact migration deals with movement of charged species due to for a difference in electric field due to gradient in the electric potential okay similarly diffusion arises because of the movement of charged species uh, uh, under the influence of chemical potential what do i mean by chemical potential under the influence of concentration gradient okay so that leads to a process called diffusion and finally <clears throat> convection arises because of mechanical disturbances okay because of hydrodynamic transport uh, processes so among these three processes we need to eliminate migration and convection because diffusion is the predominant mode of mass transfer and all the equations in electrochemistry are derived based on the assumption that diffusion is the predominant mode of mass transfer now how do we eliminate migration we can eliminate migration by using what is called the supporting electrolyte supporting electrolytes are nothing but uh, uh, species that do not undergo any electron transfer reaction okay uh, for example we can use species like sodium chloride uh, sodium fluoride sodium iodide or lithium chloride lithium perchloride sulfuric acid hcl etc all these things could be used as a uh, supporting electrolyte because those species do not involve in electron transfer reaction and similarly one can avoid convection uh, but by avoiding uh, uh, any kind of mechanical disturbances probably you guys should have observed uh, suppose if you are a phd student in your lab the electrochemical equipment would be kept on a very heavy slab <clears throat> okay like a granite slab or a heavy wooden table etc that is because to avoid the uh, uh, disturbance from mechanical uh, mechanical uh, uh, changes or you you need to also avoid the eddy current arises due to vibrational change okay um, if you don't have such kind of heavy slab you can use what is called a faraday cage probably you guys would have also seen a faraday cage you can keep your entire electrochemical cell into the faraday cage and carry out uh, electrochemical study so by by using such kind of uh, arrangement one can avoid current contribution from convection <clears throat> so that whatever the current you measure would be a pure representation arises from diffusion alone now uh, the moment you talk of diffusion there are two different laws uh, which governs uh, the diffusion process they are called fick's first law and the second law <clears throat> the first law talks about flux of the species is directly proportional to the concentration gradient what do i mean by flux which is uh, which is uh, designated here as j which is which could be equal to i by nf okay i by nf the proportionality constant is nothing but your diffusion coefficient and if you move uh, that nf from the left hand side to the right hand side you would end up with a equation where current i is equal to nf d dou pi by dou x that is nothing but your concentration gradient what do i mean by concentration gradient the num number of molecules uh, of the redox species present at the interface to the number of molecules present in the bulk this ratio would give you the concentration gradient so the fick's first law talks about the resultant current is directly proportional to the concentration gradient and it is also directly proportional to the diffusion coefficient do you get me that's the uh, fick's first law <clears throat> the second law talks about not only with respect to uh, distance away from the electrode meaning that x in the equation uh, represents the distance away from the electrode okay so not only with respect to concentration gradient how the current changes with respect to time as well so are the how the concentration profile changes with respect to time 
that kind of information is provided by fixed second law so these are the two laws that directly uh, correlates with the electrochemical process in fact i would stress upon again that all the electrochemical concepts and all the electrochemical equations are derived based on the assumption that diffusion is the predominant mode of mass transfer and these two laws uh, laws like fick's first law and fick's second law of diffusion uh, <clears throat> deals about the diffusion associated with the redox process now uh, let me let me get uh, slowly into the uh, techniques now these are the some of the fundamental concept one would be interested uh, to understand uh, uh, the electrochemistry as a whole now you guys should have heard about this nernst equation this is the equation which describe the system at equilibrium okay the system at steady state i mentioned why equilibrium is important because at equilibrium alone the electrode electrolyte interface exhibits its real characteristic i rephrase my sentence one can determine many kinetic parameters like electron transfer rate constant diffusion coefficient in terms of electrocatalysis many catalytic parameters kinetic parameter one can determine at equilibrium that will provide information and real characteristic of the material you use for such application okay and nernst equation describe the system at equilibrium this forms the basis for potentiometry technique okay now uh, apart from this this is the equation if you are doing a phd in electrochemistry i would recommend that one should know this equation this is called the butler almer equation this equation <coughs> provides the relationship between current and potential under all given conditions okay so this equation provides information about uh, i mean relationship between current and potential under all given condition this is called the butler almer equation so for example what's the relationship between current and potential at equilibrium one can determine parameters like uh, charge transfer resistance exchange current density etc and you can apply a small perturbation okay recall uh, i was hitting a person and that person is hitting me back instead of hitting him you can simply tap it you know just uh, uh, like a tap minimal perturbation so that how the interface behaves that relation is also provided uh, uh, by this butler almer that's the kind of tafel equation one would get for a minimal perturbation eta is equal to a plus b log i where a and b are nothing but tafel slopes this equation is very much essential when you talk about this water splitting reaction i will i will talk about this tomorrow again uh, so the uh, tafel slope value provides information about what is the mechanism behind the uh, such water splitting reaction okay <clears throat> what is the uh, mechanism behind a typically hydrogen evolution reaction and that type information one would get from tafel relation so like this and equilibrium and minimal perturbation and far away from equilibrium all this information one can get from uh, this butler almer equation and one can get uh, uh, the relationship between current and potential through uh, that equation now we do have techniques in electrochemistry that describes the system at equilibrium provides relationship between current and potential at equilibrium near to equilibrium and far away from equilibrium for example the techniques like potentiometry okay i will i'll talk about uh, potentiometry in a while now the techniques like potentiometry open circuit potential measurement or ocv ocp some people call open circuit voltage open circuit potential equilibrium potential e not value all uh, such kind of measurement at equilibrium uh, provides information about uh, the structure of the interface those techniques come under equilibrium technique and near to equilibrium near electrochemical impedance spectroscopy comes under that category and the final one which is far away from equilibrium 
like in, in terms of controlling the mass transfer, controlling the diffusion process, etc. Ethics like odometry, linear sieve voltammetry, cyclic voltammetry, pulse voltammetry, those techniques come under that category. So that one can able to uh, one can able to understand the electrode electrolyte interface through many different techniques so that it provides information about the relationship between current and potential and can correlate such phenomena to the interface. Okay, so that's the uh, whole idea behind using electrochemical techniques. If we use a constant current uh, based method, those techniques are called galvanostatic. One can also use constant potential, those techniques are called potentiostatic. One can vary the input signal with respect to time duration. Those techniques are either potentiodynamic or galvanic measurement. One can use both AC and DC signals as a perturbation so, uh, so that you can categorize these techniques into AC and DC techniques. <clears throat> In all these techniques, what you do is you either apply a potential or current at fixed uh, uh, time or at fixed uh, duration or one can vary the potential or current perturbation by varying with respect to time like pulses. In all these techniques, one can measure the changes in current value or the potential vice versa and correlate with the concentration, etc. The beauty of electrochemistry is not only these fundamental concepts, you can also couple the electrochemical technique with other techniques like uh, for example, or NMR or EPR, for example, so that you can carry out a spectra electrochemical technique, or one can use a hyphenate technique like scanning electrochemical microscopy, etc., so that you can image the surface of the electrode as a whole. All uh, these techniques one can do with the electrodes. <clears throat> so, uh, so how are we uh, coping up with the time, sir? Uh, how do, how long can I talk? Maybe now the time is yeah. almost 1.30, sir. Uh, how, okay. how many more slides do you have for this particular lecture? <laughs> I I do have uh, many slides because I thought of covering whole technique. But it doesn't matter. Since tomorrow also I have uh, time, yeah, I yeah. can adjust. Maybe you say if now the time is too late because they all have to go for lunch. Because morning 9.30 yeah. was started today. Okay. Okay, so maybe uh, we can continue so in another five minutes and we can continue for the next session tomorrow. Sure, sure, sir. Yes, I understand. So okay. uh, maybe what I will do is I will I will highlight maybe a couple of techniques in five minutes. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, probably tomorrow I can continue to do this and correlate with the electrocatalysis process. Yeah, yeah, is yeah. it okay? Yeah, yeah, it's fine, sir. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, sure. Uh, so okay. Now, uh, uh, probably for the next five minutes or so, let me talk about this potentiometry and amperometry and other techniques we will talk tomorrow, okay? So, uh, potentiometry is a technique in which you measure the potential at zero current, delta I is zero, okay? So, you measure the potential with respect to change in time or change in concentration of the analyte. In fact, this technique comes under equilibrium technique. All the ion selective electrodes, including pH, elect pH electrodes or ion selective electrodes specifically for chloride or Na plus, K plus, etc. All these electrodes work based on the principle of potentiometry. And Nernst's equation governs the basic principle behind potentiometry. So that whatever the potential you measure could be directly correlated with the equilibrium constant. So this technique is a very, very uh, powerful technique. <clears throat> the other kind of technique is amperometry, where at a fixed potential, you measure the change in current with respect to time or concentration. Okay, At fixed potential, you measure the change in current with respect to either time or uh, concentration of the analyte. So that technique is called amperometry. In fact, the Cotterell, in fact, the Cotterell equation provides uh, information uh, about the amperometry measure the current and correlate with the parameters like diffusion coefficient, concentration of the species, etc. 
i is uh, inversely proportional to the square root of i that's the uh, key point to behind the arithmetic in fact one can distinguish the faraday and non faraday process using this technique if we look at the output in amperometry there would be a initial sharp drop in the current value and after that it will attain a steady state the initial sharp drop talks about the double layer charging current and the steady state current would give you information about the faraday process okay do you guys get me the initial sharp uh, drop in the current which is of the order of 1 power uh, 1 by 6 okay which is very fast uh, <clears throat> that correlates with the non faraday and the steady state measured current would provides information about the electron transfer faraday process okay now instead of fixed to potential one can apply a potential pulse okay the width of the pulse talks about time duration and the height of the pulse talks about potential difference do you get me in case of pulse technique you can change the way in which you apply a potential with respect to time as a pulse so the width of the pulse talks about time duration applied to get up the interface and the height of the pulse talks about potential values so that by applying such kind of pulse technique such kind of chrono techniques what do i mean by chrono Uh, with respect to changing time you can vary the input perturbation signal so such kind of chrono techniques one can apply to monitor the change in current uh, so predominantly all the uh, most of the sensors which are available in the market for example glucometer okay all these kind of sensors works based on the principle of amperometry based technique so these two techniques are very powerful uh, in electrochemistry so what i will do is tomorrow uh, i will uh, maybe uh, talk about and highlight in a very crisp manner some of the basic concepts behind voltmetry impedance spectroscopy and then i will talk about directly electrocatalysis and water splitting reaction okay so uh, to conclude as of today uh, i would say that uh, uh, electrochemistry so you know it uh, it not just about current or potential uh, or measuring any electron transfer rate constant or electron transfer reaction etc it can it could be directly used to solve the global issues maybe i will try to highlight tomorrow why one has to involve in doing research why one has to worry about taking research as a career so electrochemistry could be used as a, a very simple but yet powerful tool to solve global issues and provide solutions to issues uh, what we uh, face during our day to day life okay so probably uh, with that i will stop yes sir for today and i will conclude maybe today so thank I, i would i would again thank for the opportunity and i would be happy to uh, answer any queries or questions you guys may have thank you thank you for your uh, patience listening Thank, thank you. you thank you for thank you for your nice presentation sir uh, maybe one or two questions from the uh, participants because the time is too late for lunch so maybe